Hello again. Thank you for tuning in. Um, my name is Solmaz. My last name is Barkir. I am life coach. And uh, the book that I have chosen today is The Compound Effect. The reason I chose this book is that this is my second Bible after The Power of Habit. And I have been working on, with this book with every single client of mine since day one. All of them have read this book. We have gone through each chapter. We have done lots of charts several times to make sure they know what they want, where did they want to, to, re, to go, what are their goals, and how they can compound it. There, that's why I chose this book. And uh, a good news, I'm going to have a workshop in a month, and we will go through this book in detail. We will work on every single chapter as much as we need because right now i have this guilty feeling I'm, i need to sum it up in 40 minutes which is nothing the compound effect is uh, been written by darren hardy who has been chief editor of uh, success magazine so he has been interviewing lots of people uh, during that time and this book is exactly as Ali Reza puts it in words the nugget of all those experiences of every single person beside himself in life what is this book it's all about small executed consistently um, actions that can lead to hugely immensely successful results both in your personal and business life and it's all about the teeny tiny choices after reading this book or after this session let's make it this way I just want you guys to make a teeny tiny choice and commit to do that to, to be committed to that choice to practice it every single day for let's say one month 40 days whatever you have in your mind and then you will see the major progress in it so what is this book what is what will be your, uh, your intake in 40 minutes first you will know that you will learn what compound effect actually is then you will also know how can you utilize and implement in uh, the book in within your life you will learn how the choices and habits can either inhibit or accelerate it, uh, uh, your life and your future and you will you will know that how can you keep your momentum going and how to monitor the influences in your life. This is the best part of it. Helped me a lot. Darren says, by the end of this book, or even before you finish this book, I want you to know in your bones that your only path to success is through a continuum, mundane, unsexy, unexciting, and sometimes difficult daily disciplines compounded over time. So it's not that much of good news, but there is a beautiful horizon in front of you. What is, I'm going to go through the book in uh, eight big ideas. Idea, big idea of, uh, number one is the compound effect in action. Darren says the compound effect is the principle of reaping huge rewards from series of small, smart choices. Most people get ripped off by the simplicity of compound effect. When we talk about it, they are like, if it was that simple, everyone else could do it. But the time, the last part is the part that we really need to be focused on it. So the formula that the Darren Hardy puts it in, in a way is says, small, smart choices plus consistency plus time. Then you will see the difference. I'm going to go through one of the examples of this book, which is this one. He says this, let's talk about three bodies who has been, who has lived, who they're all living in relative, they start in the relatively same place, okay? They are all same age. They have same, almost same, same income, 50K a year. They are in same neighborhood and they are married with kids, okay? Everything in the beginning is the same. The person in the middle, he makes no changes, good or bad, okay? He just complains, right? The second person, we are making it extremely simple, guys. The second person makes some small changes, like eliminating 200 calories a day from his uh, diet. It can be one chocolate, uh, two pieces of chocolate and an um, orange and an orange, right? And then he, he reads 10 
pages of a, a good book, okay, inspiring book. The third person, he um, recently has purchased a TV. He has made his um, downstairs, the basement, like a, a movie theater, right? And he thinks, what's the harm of having one or two beers uh, at the end of the week, right? So he doesn't make that much of humongous ch ch changes. He's just adding a couple of hours of watching TV shows or movies in his movie theater and drinking a couple of beers, right? So let's see, L look at this chart. Let's see what happens. It's not that much of really massive actions they're taking. One guy is not doing anything, the middle one, and, and not bad, not good. He's in chilling in, um, for himself. And the thing that Darren called him, he says he is living in no man's land. It's a very dangerous land, actually. Darren says he is not. When you are living there, you are not happy, but you're not in unhappy enough to make any changes. You're not happy, but you're not unhappy enough to make changes in your life. So you're passively just living and complaining, okay? And uh, it's, uh, what, uh, what will happen to the second person? Of course, he has been... For the first five months, nothing. 10 months, nothing. But after a year, you will see uh, he has been eating less, so he's getting uh, slimmer. As a result of losing um, some weight, he has decided to do some exercise to be a little bit more fit. He's reading stuff that are inspiring and motivational books, and he's applying to them. His relationship with his wife is getting better in a year going forward. He has a better uh, time, with, time, quality of uh, time with his family, with his kids, with his colleagues. And at the end, you can see his life is getting better, improving little by little when time comes after a year, of course. What about the third person? He has gained more weight since he's spending so much time downstairs, drinking beer, he has gained weight, plus he doesn't spend time with his wife. His diet, maybe his wife is lacking attention from him and he, it's, it, she's looking somewhere else to, to have more friends, to spend time with them, so there's no actual family. When you look at the whole story, it's a very simple example. You see, these people didn't do that much of big stuff. They have been just making small changes, right? But in compounded over time with consistency, watching TV show or not eating 200 calories, they, they made radical changes. And that's all Darren Hardy wants to tell us in this book. So what are some choices you could be making on a daily basis, okay, that could compound positive changes in your future? Think about them. After each big idea, we have actionable insight. Choose one of them. Like you can do 10 minutes of walk, just walking, rain or shine. You can drink two, two glasses of water more than what you're drinking and be healthier, right? It's all about making small, small changes. And then we will go to big idea number two. Your decision determine your destiny. Darren says choices are at the root of every one of your results. Each choice starts a behavior that over time becomes a habit. Last week, we talked about power of habit and the habit loop. Right now, we are going forward with that knowledge, most probably. Begin by becoming aware of the choices you are making and how those choices are impacting your life. Our biggest challenge in our uh, in life isn't what kind of bad habit or bad choices we willingly make. Darren really emphasizes on that in his book, and it's one of the um, um, one of the actionable insights that Darren is talking about. He says, t uh, think about one important choice like gr uh, gratitude and. Think about choosing gratitude, how much it influences on other areas of your life. You will be better people, you will attract better people, you will be better in relationship, 
but you will have uh, more pleasant people around and you will have better life all in and all um, when you are grateful things uh, that are better and good opportunities and better choices will come to your way so the actionable insight is keep a gratitude journal and most of the time i ask my uh, clients to each night before they go to bed write three areas three things that they are grateful that day write them down and don't repeat the things that you have written before so the big idea number three is take ownership of your life you alone are responsible for what you do and don't do or how you respond to what is done to you this is what darren says it means that whatever choices we make and how we react to other people it's all our responsibilities not theirs it doesn't matter what happens to us it matters how we react it's life is not about luck or circumstances life is about what you choose to do in the moment we all experiences we are experienced luck or opportunities in a way or another the difference though between successful people and unsuccessful people is has little to do with luck it had it got a lot to 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 the way we respond to opportunities or whatever we call it luck you simply cannot see what cannot um, see what you're looking for this is what darren says and you do not look for something that you don't believe in it right so that's why darren brings the formula for luck he says luck is preparation which is essentially growth and const constant self-improvement then attitude this is the your mindset your um, beliefs that we will talk next week then opportunities this is recognizing a good thing when it comes to your way okay and then action I think this formula goes a lot with the um, secret love, love attraction. You know what they don't emphasize a lot? The action part. The part that you should work on it. You should, you should be on top of it. You shouldn't just sit down and say, okay, this is it. I'm, I'm going to sit down and attract whatever I want. No, that doesn't work like that. You will attract them, but you should work on it. You should do something about them. And in order to take control of your life and your future success, you have to choose to be 100% responsible for whatever it comes to your life, bad or, bad or good. Choose which one you want to leave and put some actions on it. So uh, what is the actionable uh, insight? It is uh, identify the area of your life that you struggle the most and start there. So you can, I'm going to make it really simple here. You can, if you're working on your diet, say, okay, start a food journal. This is what, see, Darren is, em emphasizes a lot on writing down. Write down what your, what's your intake, what you're eating. If you're working on your finances, write down every and each expenses you make and be aware of them. Be methodical. What gets measured gets managed so keep your changes simple and easy to track you're gonna start from somewhere and it should be easy to track don't overcomplicate because if you confuse yourself you will lose yourself so keep it simple and do something every single day big idea number four is do not let your habits control you Darren says, a daily routine built on good habits is the difference that separates the most successful amongst us from everybody else. He, he gives us five strategies. The first one is identify your trigger. What is the first trigger bad, um, of a bad habit you have? We talked about it yesterday in habit, um, sorry, last week in habit loop. Habit loop starts with Q, which is a trigger. Something triggers us, like certain people, some environment. I had a um, friend who was really heavy smoker. Each time it was, the weather would be a little bit rainy. She would say, okay, I need to smoke. I, I could see that, that, that was her trigger. And then you go to 
the second strategy, clean house. What does that mean? Get rid of every single thing that enables you to continue the bad habit. Toss the junk food, mm, say the alcohol. There it says even throw out your coffee maker if necessary, depending on what kind of habit and goals you have here. The third one is swap it. For me, replacing bad habits for healthy habits, I had a lot of them that I needed to do something about them. One of them was during the time that I was studying hard for, for a course. I remember I was craving chunky, uh, crunchy stuff a lot. And it started with veggie straw, it ended to chips, and I was dipping it in unhealthy dips. And one day I was like, okay, I know I'm, I'm in habit loop. I know it's the cue is craving. And I just need to change the routine, right? To swap it with something else. What did I do? I made some, every night I would start studying for five hours. I would prepare some carrots, celery. I love pepper. I would cut them with some yogurt, with mint and garlic powder. And it had taste. It was healthy. The crunchiness was there. And I swapped it. And at the end of the night, after five hours of studying, I wouldn't think, oh my God, I ate so much chips. That's an example of my, on myself. And then ease into it. Small, consistent steps are going to get you there. Don't make it difficult. The first step should be small but consistent, as he said. And if you can't ease in it, in it just jump in it, as Darren says. Um, I had a client, he, he was spending lots of time on um, screen. He had lots of screen time and he was complaining a lot. We started with time logging, thinking about different strategies to stop the TV at a certain time, but he couldn't do it. So ease in it didn't work for him. I said, you know what? Just unplug your TV, put it in storage, wait for a week. Let's see what will happen. That worked for him. You need to find out your trigger and how you can change it. The, the next big idea, idea number five, is identify your why and get goals, so set your goals. Forget about willpower for now, Darren says. It's time for why power. When, when the reason is big enough, you will be ready to identify almost anything. So it's absolutely crucial to clarify and identify your personal why. If you have a clear why, purpose, a mission, a cause, a belief to guide you, then your likelihood to achieve your goals will skyrocket. Your why springs from something deep and meaningful. You will do whatever it takes to succeed because you understand that your long-term results are going to outweigh. And a way to, uh, um, to do that is your choices because your choices become more meaningful when you're connected uh, to achieving your dreams in a way that's in, it's in the line with your why, with your purpose. I always, for myself, I can see there is a difference between pushing yourself or being pulled by something. If I'm pushing myself to do something by so much force, it means that I haven't found, found my burning desire yet. I don't know what's my why power. But if I wake up and I think, oh my God, this is another day, I'm gonna do something about it. There is something in the corner of my mind, it means that I have found my why power. So there is, uh, says in this book that knowing your enemies is going to help you too. It's a very interesting concept. He says, l l when you're listening to hatreds and naysayers, instead of um, uh, identifying yourself with their thoughts, just incorporate the, them as your kind of enemies that are pushing you forward toward your goal against what they say. So what's the actionable item here? He says, define your why by first identifying your core values. This is the whole session of workshop to find it, but I'm gonna just give you a good hint here. First thing first, you need to write down whatever core values come to your mind that you believe in, like happiness, justice, um, health, helpfulness, compassionate, write them all down and then, 
do you do you do that list to three top core values you believe the most i always say okay you write it down then give yourself 10 seconds and circle three top core values that come to your mind then if, uh, at the end create a why statement okay like my statement two years ago when i went to today i went to my charts was um the uh, statement was uh, my statement is to empower and help people so that they can improve their lives and achieve their goals and be happy okay so you can catch my three core values right it is empowering helping and happiness what are yours you need to take to have to put some time aside and work on it then work on your statement what's your statement next idea next big idea is find your momentum and stick to it you get started by taking one small step one action at a time progress is slow but once a newly formed habit is kicked in Big Mo joins the party. I love Big Mo. That's momentum and your success and results will compound rapidly when you got that on your side. When Big Mo kicks in, you're on the right track. Once you start making new choices based on your core values and goals, you'll need to start putting them to work consistently and building habits. That's when your goals become habits. And what are habits? Habits makes you get results you want, become automatic on whatever you want to do, just waking up, just like waking up, brushing your teeth. And that's how we say, now you're beginning to build momentum. And before you know, it will, um, uh, it will become absolutely unstoppable. They will be part of your DNA. What's your actionable insight here? Choose your own thing that you want to do in the morning or in the after uh, evening before going to bed. Darren believes that these are two um, um, very essential times of day that we are most efficient before we go to bed, before we sleep, and um, be, before we get uh, we get out uh, in the morning and we want to start our day you can do you can choose meditating you can choose going for a walk you can be exercising whatever you want here we can merge two actionable insights the one i talked about journal uh, the gratitude journal you can do it here you can put it before going to bed writing down three um, aspects of day that you are grateful for and go from there and then Big idea number seven, control your influences. For me, my friend, this big idea was the most helpful idea. Darren says, your mind is like an empty glass. It will hold anything you put in it. Everything you create will be filtered through what your brain consumes. That's how it works. Garbage in, garbage out. So think about it, how many TV shows, how many news, how many headlines, how many um, bad uh, news all over the uh, day you just attract and you absorb during me with media, how many news channel uh, channels you have. These are all putting garbage in your mind. The same way we are careful and cautious what we eat, the same way we should be cautious what we consume to our, to our mind how our mind is full of the stuff that we, uh, we, we consume as diet, right? Ruthlessly, diligently avoid the tabloid sensational media marketing messages that they, are, they try to inject your brain, whatever they, their, their goal is. Be picky with uh, what you consume and be picky with, what, with who you surround yourself with. The people you surround yourself with are the people who challenge you. Avoid the complainers and those who enable you to make bad habits. 
be with people who are going to help you to rise up. This is the main message of uh, Darren in this chapter. He says, watch out who are you hanging out daily basis. He talks about um, the circle of influence, the five people beside your immediate family, five people that you, who you hang out the most with. It, it shouldn't be ex, uh, necessarily face to face. You can talk with a friend of yours back home, but it's one of your five, it, it, it should be one of your five um, circle of influences. And Darren says, your personality is a good mix of those five people. So watch it. At the end of the day, you are going to do what you tolerate. So stop tolerating less than you deserve right that's what darren says and you need to control the people who you're hanging out with the actionable insight here for this big idea is first put aside set aside three 30 minutes in the beginning of each day and read something and inspirational and uplifting instead of listening to news and be on cp24 or something like that and next go on a media diet this chapter, this big idea has helped me a lot. It's interesting. If you go through the book and fill out the chart at the end of this chapter and compare it in a year or so, you will see how much your life has changed if you have been taking actions consistently. And the last big idea is how to accelerate, it, accelerate the compound effect. When you are prepared, practice, studied and consistently put in the required effort sooner or later you will be presented with your own moment of truth and that moment will define who you are and who you are becoming says Darren Hardy look at your life back five years ago and um, right now look what was your goal five years ago have you kicked the bad habits you vowed to do that? Is the life in the shape that you want it to be? Are you as healthy and you, uh, as you wanted? Are, is your income the same way that you wanted? Your lifestyle, personal freedom? Is everything the same way? If not, even if in one area, we need to look why. Most probably it's your choices, right? So it's time to make new choices. This book will help you a lot to make new choices. Small ones. I'm not telling you make your life upside down. No, small, teeny, tiny choices. Choose not to let the next five years to be in the continuum of the last. Choose the change you need once and for all. And let the next five years to be fantastically different than last five actionable insight is to identify and write down three areas of your personal or professional life in which you want you can go a little bit extra miles and beat expectation and think about it and commit to taking consistent actions and pushing past your best each of us in, in any stage of our lives, we may hit a wall when striving toward our goals, right? And there are the moments that we discover, okay, this is how much I want on my goal. I will try a little bit more. Exactly at the time that every single pe people around you fall back. And by the way, here the power of influence is really, really showing itself that who you are hanging out with. Who are the people here will support you? It will either encourage you or discourage you. Darren says you don't, you do not need any more new information. All you need, my friends, is a new plan of action. That's why he says by the end of this book, he wants you to know it in your bones that your only path to success is through a continuum, mundane, unsexy, unexciting, some, sometimes difficult, constant actions. So we are all done with all the uh, nuggets of the book and we are open for questions. 
Awesome, that was very good, quite concise, right to the point. I really enjoyed it and people in Facebook are also enjoying it. Awesome, so guys, if you have any uh, question from Solmas uh, with regards to habits, changing habits um, and ways to install new habits, you can by all means, please share it in the chat box so um, she will be answering your questions. Or, or they can't. If it's difficult for them to type, they can talk. Yeah, you can also raise your hand and unmute yourself and talk to us if you want to. Let me check. Okay, the first question comes from Mashi. Uh, mm -hmm. She's asking, how can we be more happy? How can we be happier deeply? Oh, that's a golden question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> by knowing what we want from our life that's what i learned and in this book it's talk, uh, darren talks about it a lot that we need to know what what is the why power right um, um fatima was talking uh, the other day about uh, in the book that she was uh, summarizing that happiness most pro most probably is not our achievements regarding to whatever we earn in uh, finances or where we reach in uh, co corporate life right happiness is the moment being in the moment and enjoying the process that's why darren says don't make a huge enormous change that doesn't work you can't be consistent you can be consistent with teeny tiny changes small small steps and i think um it um she mash it john yeah, is, was it Mashit? Mashit John, I think one of the reasons we, we don't feel happy in this world, there are many times in life that we put such huge goals that even thinking about reaching that goal is so difficult that makes us depressed, you know? And that's how we, we, we make the life 100% more difficult than it is. So for me, it has been, especially after reading this book, it has been putting teeny tiny baby steps, right? But being consistent and the feeling of achieving that consistent change, being consistent on something is so rewarding that makes me happy. And I've learned to tap my back. Kuan, do you have any questions? I was going to type one. Okay, go ahead. Don't type it. Say it. Oh, Kwan is here. Good to see you. <laughs> awesome. I was gonna I was gonna ask, how do you how do you grow your why? So a lot of what you had been sharing is you need to have something pull you and you can't just have you be pushing yourself because that leads to frustration. And yeah. so how do you help someone grow their why? Like let's say they have a really small why and it's not enough to really pull you. How do you grow that? It, uh, it is such an amazing question, Kwan. Yeah, the, for me, the biggest challenge as a life coach with my clients has been to find their why. I asked them, I said it last week too, I asked them, uh, what, is, uh, what do you want in, like, in, a, in the partner, future partner? And they say, I, want, I don't want him to be fat. I don't want him to be uh, this. I don't want him to be that. And I'm like, okay, what do you want? And they can't even dare to say what exactly they want. They think so small, as you say, Kwan, that, okay, he should be a decent guy. Okay, decent guy who is, or decent girl, who is, do you, do, is the education important for you? I guess what is going the best uh, answer for your question, Kwan, is to dig more, to ask more questions. And I learned with this book and with the work um, sheets at the end of this chapter that we need to spend quality time with ourselves, guys. We can't just come to this book summit, Solmas Talks for 40 minutes, chop, 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 take notes. Okay, great PowerPoints and leave it. No, this is just the start point. Solmas should dare to spend time, quality time with herself. All these actionable insights Darren Hardy talks about and many other leaders, they say spend quality time with yourself. When something happens to you that you feel exhausted, you feel shocked, you feel sad, you feel depressed, take a moment, sit down, 
pen and paper, what's bothering you so much? Write down. You know, the first two lines is your ego. If you wait enough to go to the third, fourth, fifth line, it will be your subconscious mind kicking in and letting you what's happening in your mind. What kind of feeling you're experiencing? So Kuan, the, the main answer, the most per consistent answer to your question is to dig in, to spend more time. I like and that. I guess yeah, that's very got, helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Any awesome. more questions? Great answer. Yeah, definitely. What, what you mentioned, Solmas, here uh, about values, as, as Darren suggests, uh, it is very important for us to discover our values. One question, simple question that every one of us can ask ourselves uh, is, what is important to me in my life? What exactly. is important? And you just have to think about it and write down the, the core concepts that come to you. And then you ask yourself, what is important to me in the context of my relationships? What is important to me in, in my career, in my life? And when you get these ideas, these answers, majority of them will be your values, as Solma says here, right? These will be your values. And then you can just put them in a, in, in a list and prioritize them. What is number one? In this list of 20 items to 15 items, whatever, which one is the most important one? Which is number one? Which one is number two? Which one is number three? And then with, when you have the first three to five values on your list, then you can write a statement about yourself, something that resonates with you. That way you find your why in a beautiful statement. And, um, and I think you, you can find your answers. Yeah, good, good point and very good question as well by Kwan and uh, also by Solmas, good answer. I think Anyone we have else? another. Yes, there is a quick question. Make sure it's quick. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe? Right, so yeah. Chloe. Yes, darling. Um, I'm sorry I came in a bit late, but I got the main gist of the presentation. I do have one that might be a little bit challenging, and I'm trying to figure out right now. Um, Ali Reza just mentioned that we kind of derive our why um, by looking at our values, right? But what I want to ask is, do you think it's imperative to have the same why as your partner? You know, we always talk about when we find our partners, the, the great um, optimal partner for ourselves, right? We look at common values, which is fantastic. But, you know, Ali Reza, you mentioned that your values would help you determine what your why is. Now, my question for you, Solmaz, is, and you, you can speak from your personal experience as well. Do you think it's imperative to have the same why as your partner? And if not, is it just enough to just support each other's why? Chloe, this is such a cool question <laughs> i love it <laughs> giving the fact that i know what who are you talking about makes it more <laughs> difficult for me <laughs> but but darling years ago when i uh, started my carl gustav young's uh, uh, education and it took more than 10 years the first day the first day our uh, the the person who was teaching told us when you learn something do not think it's on you to go change the world. Try to apply it on yourself first. The change you make in yourself, the kind of vibration you create will attract others. Try to be the best example versus from the moment you know, oh, oh, I know, I know, this is my husband. This is my wife. I should go tell her she is doing it right. No, no, no. Just try to uh, implement it on yourself. We are the best changes in the world, Chloe. You know that. They always say that you should start the change from inside, right? Mm -hmm. So even if the values are not the same, if your values are authentic enough and you're working to, uh, in the same line with your values consistently, mm -hmm. you will make the change that not only your partner, but every single friend of yours will be attracted to the way that you're living your life. Mm. And then you will grow with your partner in the same level. Mm -hmm. The problem we have is that in the beginning of the way, we discover something, we want to just spread it everywhere in the world without being internally living it. Right, right. I'm not sure if I got, I, I gave you the answer. 
No, you did because um, I guess sometimes um, I get so boggled with this question, the one that I just presented you, right? But I, I kind of forget that, you know what, like change should start from within. And sometimes I, I kind of neglect or I put aside the work that I need to do on myself first in order to, in order to attain that fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you should start living it yourself. Mm -hmm. The rest will come. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so much, John. Yes, darling. Uh, my daughter is here. She is only seven years old, but she was, uh, you know, listening with us. Can she answer a question? She has a question. I wanted her to, you know, she asked by herself, not me. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Talk. Um, I really. Hi. Hello. Hi. Mostly, sometimes in the morning, I have a bad morning and like I get really mad and grumpy about things and I want to understand how to calm down. Oh, that's such a nice question, honey. <laughs> First off, great job on understanding and having the feelings that you can name them. That's super duper cool. <laughs> so you get frustrated in the morning and you're grumpy? Yes. Okay, tell me. Um, what could happen when you're grumpy to, to, for you to be ha um, What could happen to, to be happy? Like, tell me one thing that can cheer you up. I always get cheered up when it's a good weather and I go outside for a walk. Okay, what if it's not a good weather? Um, I'm probably just going to get more mad. <laughs> <laughs> what if you... Uh, what if you listen to a music you like? Does it cheer you up? I love dancing. Everyone knows. So whenever I feel grumpy, I just play music I like and dance for, for five minutes. Not really. Not really? What about a, um, a song that you can just listen and be happy with it? Mm, I don't have a lot of favorite songs. You have <laughs> to No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't just choose one. What about, what about eating something that you like? That's not really going to work, but I'm going to be like, oh, thanks for the food for no reason. <laughs> it's a tough client. <laughs> no, he, she's right. These days, most of us are grumpy when we wake up, right? <laughs> She's totally right. I think if the weather is good, of course, a walk will be amazing. Yeah. yeah. For me, sometimes I put music on YouTube that has lots of, uh, it's a relaxing music. Not like a One day. thing would calm me down. Yeah, tell me, what? Ordering Starbucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy should listen to you. <laughs> you you know, you work every day, right? It no, doesn't no, work no. Every day. It doesn't you know, work you... every day. Oh, okay. But at the same time, you can open a Starbucks at home and do whatever you want at home with your Starbucks. We did that yesterday. Okay, it's, it's, oh, it's good. good. I have See? another question. So, there's one thing that usually calms me down. Yeah, what is it? I, st I start like, I start um, calling my friends and talking to them and stuff. And then, Very good. and then that cheers me up a little. Good. So you have your own solutions, darling. You just need to think about it. But there's them. one thing that's annoying about it. They, uh, they call every morning when I wake up. <laughs> okay, you can you may ask them to talk to them a little bit later. Call them back, huh? Um. Yeah. Maybe I could ask. Okay. Yeah, that's Thank you for your question, honey. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, You're so patient. Hey guys, may I ask a question as well? Hi. <laughs> Hi, no, no. Yes, please go. Hi, so much, Jen. Um, I I usually let's say that we catch twenty two in our feelings. Like we are somewhere, we're angry. The the result of our anger or the like, disappointment stuff is still there. We are still angry, and like we are in the <laughs> we are in between things um, too. I've seen that the, I, I read that book. I, I know that it has a lot of practice in it, but still, like when when we are in our uh, in our like catch twenty two, that we cannot just get out of. We, we cannot eliminate the cause, and so we cannot just. Uh, 
we can't ignore our feelings, but it is going to be still there. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, suggestion about those kind of situations? That is a very good question, of course. That's uh, most of our concerns these days, especially these days. No. What I have learned, actually, Darren talks it in this book too, I learned it with my son. Whenever he has feelings, ang being angry, one of them, that he, he is obsessed with them, I ask him to talk to me about it because I have practiced it with myself that I tell him, tell me how you feel. He says, I'm angry, mommy. Why are you angry? It's like you're talking to yourself, right? And uh, it's like I used to write it down for myself. So much you feel frustrated or you are, something is bothering you. What's bothering you? Why you feel that much of anger? As I said, the first two lines is uh, all or your ego. It's been completely filtered. But the more you write down, the more you face yourself, your subconscious. Feeling anger in a consistent basis, on a consistent basis, is because we haven't gotten to the root of our emotions, good or bad. Our subconscious mind wants to tell us, you know what, you should do something about it. I can't take it anymore. That's why it comes a lot to us. I do it with my son and I, he is, okay, he's a kid and he's so honest. He tells me stuff that I'm so, like the other day he was telling me because daddy bugs me a lot. And I'm like, what did daddy do to you? Apparently daddy didn't pay the, the amount of attention he wanted at, at a certain time. But for myself, whenever I write it down, whenever I think about it deeply, why is it coming again? It came last week. I had the same emotion. Didn't I, couldn't I get to the root? And I see, no. I met someone else. I talked to someone else. I uh, encounter another problem, same, t same kind of t texture, and it's coming again. So all I'm saying is that most probably you, when one emotion uh, comes to your mind, you need to sit down, be ruthlessly honest with yourself and see what's the root of your anger or whatever feeling you have. If you write it down, honey, I'm 150% sure you will find a reason. Um, I, I understand that reasoning can be like just a very first solution to uh, the very first step to find a solution. But most of the angers or disappointments comes from frustration because you already know where your problem is, but you cannot just eliminate it or like solve it or pass through that. That's why you get angry or mm -hmm. uh, disappointed. Uh, the question is that like practicing along, along to get more logical than being emotional with your problems is <laughs> you are you are pointing, of the work. yeah yeah you are pointing something really really necessary here sometimes we are frustrated over a problem which exists but at the time we cannot do anything about it so if we can distinguish this the with uh, versus a problem that you can do something right now it's it's it applies to worriness too Whenever I'm worried, I think, okay, can I do something right now at this moment or not? Most of the time, 99%, you cannot do anything about it. It's just your feeling obsessing you. So when you write it down, you will see, okay, what's the actionable insight for it? Can I do something? No. When is the first time I can do something about it? When you put your mind on, on the paper, your, your feelings will leave you alone and you can, as you say, logically, you can find a solution for each problem and there's no frustration after. Frustration comes when you haven't figured it out what is the root of your problem, how you can, what are the actionable on, items on it. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Great point, great point so much. I just want to add one, one little thing here. Yes, sure. Uh, and, and that is, um, at the time we feel frustrated or angry or somehow we feel something negative in the inside the one of the best solutions is to ask a different question because most of the time we ask why why should this happen why is it like this why is it like that and definitely the answers we get is not going to be helping us like why is covid 19 happening to me this time why should it happen to my business why is it affecting all aspects of my life but when we rephrase it into a question like how or what, like what I can do to get the most out of it, what I can do in these situations to be happy, to be excited, to be productive, 
and to earn money or whatever. It, it depends on the situation. But when we ask this kind of questions, automatically the emotions will change because we change the focus of the mind into something more productive, something more positive. And definitely um, that will help us. And as Solma says, I really agree. This is very important to write down. When we write down, we engage everything. We engage our eyes, we engage the body, the body movements, the kinesthetic part of the body will, will, will help us uh, manage the, the emotion and get a better result for sure. Awesome. Any questions? I have to add one thing, but I want to make sure we address all the questions. There was one question from Facebook. Uh, Farhana asked this question. Um, she was saying like about when, when we talked about why and you talked about why, and she's, what she's asking is, uh, is it that we develop and learn, um, learn our whys and, we'll, and, and when we grow, this why will change? That's her question. Like uh, as, uh, as time passes, what of happens course. to our why? Of course, it's, uh, if uh, we grow, right? Our mind grows. We learn new stuff. If, we are, if you are all in this, uh, on this life, it means that you are trying to find new uh, answers. You are trying to learn better stuff. So your why changes, of course. For you guys, for sure, 100%. 100%. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to add two things. First off, I have a link for all these books in my website in case you want to buy them or listen to them. Second, we will have the workshop for this book in a month, four weeks from now. And uh, I'm going to ask you, anyone who is interested, just email me because I need some data for that to see who is interested for to send the link for registration. Okay, you can put the link here. I'm going to put it on Facebook if you want, so that the people who are the link of my Facebook website is here, barkir.com. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm going to type it uh, in on Facebook so that, so that people see. And my awesome. email is solmas at barkir.com. Easy. Awesome, great. I think everyone can see the screen, so please do that. If you want, you can also write down the information that you see on the page. All right, great. Um, I just, there was something in my mind, if, if you don't mind, just for yeah, a sure. minute. I don't know if Chloe is here or not. If she is, she was asking a question about values and Hi. values of other people. Hi, Chloe. Partners. Hi. Um, right, about partners. I just wanted to add one, one extra point to her question. Um, you, we cannot find two people who share exactly same values. Definitely, that's definitely. a fact. That's number one. Number two, if you find two people whose values number one to values number five are mm -hmm. exactly the same, I mean, same words, it is highly possible that their ideas of those values are also different. Mm -hmm. So again, it is impossible to find two people with the same set of values and priorities. Mm -hmm. But what is important in partnership and relationships is that when we have a partner, it is important to identify each other's values. We understand mm -hmm. each other's values and we find out the degree to which these values are, are not conflicting or are compatible to each other. Mm -hmm. If they are compatible with, with each other, it's much better because the other person will complete us and we can actually create synergy out of this relationship or partnership. I just mm -hmm. want to add this little point to, thank you, to that welcome. question. You're most welcome and thank you. Your session was great. I really enjoyed it. I never get tired of learning. <laughs> of and course. there was so much of learning for not only me, but everybody here. And I'm sure everyone enjoyed it. And thank um, you, Reza. Thank you, everybody else. Thank you uh, so much. Um, next week, you're going to talk about the book Mindset. Yes, the Mindset. I wow. love it. I love People that topic would be again. In love with that. <laughs> <laughs> and next week, this day again, next uh, Wednesday, we will see Solmas. Uh, every Wednesday, we will meet Solmas, so we will see each other two more time at least. <laughs> and and that's about it. If you have final words, please do share with us. Otherwise, Nothing. we will Thank finish the session. Thank you very much for being here. And Alariza, thank you very much for arranging everything. My pleasure. It's amazing. I'm enjoying it a lot. And thank you for being involved, guys. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. And have an enjoyable evening. Thank you so evening. much. Take care.